representing Biltmore Construction, Bill Parker, Rick Parker, Bruce Schaefer, and Marcus Trobau. Please join me in thanking all of them for their contributions. It is my pleasure to introduce our president, Bernie Matchin. He's been here since January 2004, and it has been a busy time for the university as well as the library. Before coming to UF, Bernie served as president of the University of Utah, so we already had a good hangle on handle on legislature and state politics. With a doctorate in dental surgery from St. Louis University and a PhD in educational psychology from the University of Iowa, he covers both sides of modern universities. He served as a professor and associate dean at the University of North Carolina School of Dentistry, dean of the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, and later provost and vice president for academic affairs at Michigan. He is a diplomat of the American Board of Pediatric Dentistry and was president of the American Association of Dental Schools. With this extensive academic background, he undoubtedly has some well-informed opinions about university libraries. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. And, uh... Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sort of speaking through the trees to some of you, but uh, that's where I usually am, hiding in the trees, so it works well for me. I do welcome you all here for this joyous occasion. It's a special time for the university when we can dedicate something that's so central to our being as this library. I would like to say just for a moment uh, how much we regret that Senator Smathers has passed on before this happened. Certainly one of our greatest alumni someone who had a distinguished career in public service. And I personally, and I know the university uh, as a group, appreciates his recognition of and support for our libraries. It's a significant commitment that he made and has made a big difference to us, and we miss his presence here today. I want to thank Dale for her introduction. I think many of you know that Dale is retiring at uh, the end of this month after serving as library director for 22 years. She leaves behind a long list of accomplishments and has a distinguished career in guiding our libraries during that time, including overseeing the digitizing of the card catalog and other significant technological changes here at the library. The Marston Science Library was opened on, and the Smathers Library was renovated on her watch. The, the original Library West was dedicated 40 years ago this spring. And until 2003, the building had never undergone any significant renovation. It took over two years, and what we're dedicating today is essentially a new Library West. Like all new or newly renovated buildings on the University of Florida campus, the new Library West is a green building. Among other green features, the library has high efficiency, fluorescent lighting, water-saving bathrooms, and is built with environmentally friendly materials. We have submitted this library for a LEED Silver Rating, which if approved will classify it as the greenest building on our campus. The numbers tell part of the story about Library West transformation. Gross square footage has been increased from 117,000 to 177,000. Total seating capacity from 465 to 1,400 seats. The number of shelving miles has increased from 18 miles to 32 miles. When the original Library West was built, it held perhaps 500,000 volumes. Today's, its capacity is over 1.2 million volumes. And here's the rest of the story. We've gone well beyond adding seats and making room for more books. The library is designed to support in every way how our students today and our faculty learn and study. Students often work in teams today, and this library has 20 group study carols. And most of all, this library embases information technology. Everything about this facility is designed to meet today's and hopefully tomorrow's technology demands. There are 126 general use computers, 18 computers with specialized software in the digital media center, 
and eight digital microfilm readers. Everyone in the building has wireless access, and one of the group study rooms is equipped with full teleconferencing technology. This technology-rich environment enables students and scholars to simultaneously tap all the printed media, both past and present. Students can research newspaper archives on the digital microfilm scanner while at the same time referencing a book and using their laptops in search of an e-journal on the Internet. And it all happens right on their fingertips. When this library first acquired electronic referencing capabilities in the early 1980s, searching was difficult and also expensive. Scientists and scholars were charged $25 per search and assisted, were assisted by a librarian specially trained in this new and, at the time, very difficult technology. And, of course, they can do it all today from home for free. Some may question the value of libraries in the information age, but I believe, if anything, they are only more essential. Nationwide, there are over 117,000 libraries. More than 60% of Americans have a library card. Library West clocks 7,000 visits a day. That's about 1.5 million visits per year. We circulate about a million volumes per year and distribute 40,000 volumes on interlibrary loans. Suffice it to say, we really do need that escalator and for it to keep running. So why do people come to libraries today? The obvious answer would be the books and the other resources. But the library also continues to play a role in a as a treasured place for learning and for quiet reflection, just as it has for the last century. Frances Mays, the author of Under a Tuscan Sun, earned her bachelor's degree in English here in 1962. She has said that at the University of Florida, I was passionately interested in literature. My best times were in the library. I took stacks of books into the music listening cubicles and read and reveled in chamber music. The library is also a meeting place. And I guess it does seem to help that we have a Starbucks. <laughs> Students love Starbucks, and they love the one here. It's the first full-service Starbucks on our campus and there's always a line. Books, coffee, and conversation naturally go together. The University of Florida libraries are known nationwide for their collections, including the Latin American, African studies, and the children's literature collections. We also have over two dozen of the very rare and valuable incunable texts, the first printed books. These books were made between 1450 and 1500 AD during the end of the era when books were still being hand copied. We're very lucky to have them. This $30 million renovation has made this massive renovation possible, and it is symptomatic of our commitment to building a great public library system here at our university. Indeed, it is not possible to have a great university to which we, a goal to which we aspire without having a great library system. And I hope that you will join with me today in celebrating this great new Library West. Thank you.